Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Wilmer. I'm so glad you're joining us today for this brief time. And not in the Word today, but in a summary of a book that I just finished reading. It's called Born Again and is by Charles Coulson. Uh, Charles Coulson is not alive anymore, at least, at least bodily. Um, and this is a, a guy who was a politician back in the early 70s. Now he's with the Lord because he received the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't read it because I'm interested in politics. I read it because he met the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love reading biographies, especially the ones where they talk about Jesus Christ and the uh, power, the conversion they experience and how their lives becomes better, not only uh, here on earth, but forever because of their faith in Jesus Christ. So I would like to share with you a little bit about what I learned in this book. Uh, I was, I am not acquainted with the politics of the 70s. Actually, I'm not acquainted with the politics today. But one thing I can tell you is that by reading this book and by watching some of the news that happened today, not much has changed in politics. I had the privilege of being born in Central America, in Honduras, Central America, and I actually uh, voted because in Honduras, you are allowed to vote after you turn 18 years old. And let me tell you something. The difference between politics in Latin America and Europe and the United States is just language. So I hope that uh, you take a, a look at this book and that I hope that it helps you to put your faith more, more in Jesus Christ than in any politician out there. Uh, one of the, the reasons I, I praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ coming into my heart and, change, and saving me is that um, since I gave my life to Jesus, since He came into my heart, He became the shepherd of my life. And as the shepherd of my life, you know, He is the provider of all my needs. So I don't, I don't rely on the government or on, the, uh, on any government for my provision. I rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing that happened is that Jesus Christ became the anchor of my hope. Therefore, I'm not afraid of the future. He holds the future in His hand. Therefore, you know, I trust Him. So I live my life knowing that as long as He is in control, I will be okay. In fact, one of the verses that I was reading in the Bible recently that remind me of how important it is for us to keep our eyes on Jesus is uh, Psalm 118, verse 8 and 9, where it says that it is better to depend on the Lord than to trust mortals. It is better to depend on the Lord than to trust influential people. In fact, other versions that I was reading of the same verse, the, the words influential people are translated strong leaders, uh, princes, or people in power. So as far as me is concerned, and I don't mean to judge anyone out there, as far as me is concerned, it will be hard for me to imagine myself trusting in a political leader, in a political leader excuse me, to make my life better. But unfortunately... That's what the Bible says will happen in the last days. More and more people will be looking for a political world leader. And the Bible says that that will give an open door for the Antichrist to come in. So the warning for us is just never to put the eyes, our eyes on a man or a woman who runs for office. Because it can be a trap from the enemy and keep our eyes from following Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. So Charles Coulson was known as the hatchet man for the uh, Nixon presidency. Uh, in fact, in the book, Charles uh, goes on to say that he loved hearing the phrase, if you need anything done, give it to Coulson. He will get it done. In fact, the Wall Street Journal in 1971, this is what he wrote about Coulson. He wrote, call it what you will, Chuck Coulson handles the president's dirty work. So in the end, uh, Charles Coulson ended up in prison. Uh, and many of the other uh, aides of the presidency had on his, uh, at his hands during that uh, term. But before his indictment, Charles Coulson uh, committed his life to Jesus Christ. He met with a friend of his that gave him a book to read. And the name of the book was Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I haven't read that book yet. I need to pick it up now. But by reading that book, uh, a lot of the questions and doubts that Charles Coulson had about God... Uh, were answered, and he committed his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He discovered that he was going in the wrong direction, uh, not politically, of course, but um, spiritually, morally, and more important, eternally. So he, he was involved, he was doing whatever it took to keep Nixon 
in power. And, and one of the first gifts that he received from a follower, from a fellow follower of Jesus Christ, uh, was a New Testament, a little tiny New Testament. In the New Testament, the person who gave him this uh, New Testament wrote a quote. And this is uh, the first quote I want to encourage you with is that he wrote, it is better to fail in a cause that will ultimately succeed than to succeed in a cause that will ultimately fail. Uh, when, when Colson read that, he understood that he was, he went, he was hands-on. He was 24-7 involved in the presidency of Richard Nixon. He was doing whatever it took to keep Nixon in power, to stay in power, because he believed that he was doing the good, the best work that he can do. But until he met the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he, he discovered, you know what, that it didn't matter what political party he was serving, what president see, he was serving, whatever cause it was, it was going to be, it was going to fail ultimately. Uh, of course, he already knew Jesus Christ by then, but it made me think about, Wilmer, what are the causes that you're fully involved in Will they succeed ultimately? The second quote that I uh, uh, love reading from this book is a quote that Colson himself wrote. But it was a quote that he wrote because of a letter he received from a, from a stranger. Uh, this man, he had, written, he had read an article written about Colson. You know, after Colson became a follower of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, there were a lot of people writing stuff about him, some in favor and some against him. Well, there was a quote in the Washington, uh, there was an article in the Washington Post that this man began to read. And because he read the story of Colson, he decided to recommit his life to Jesus Christ. And when he was reading it, he was, uh, he was drunk. He was a drunkard. He didn't care about his family or his children. But when he read the article, he recommitted his life to Jesus Christ. And because of it, he wrote a letter to Colson. And in the letter, he wrote that, uh, Usually by Christmas Day, he would usually open the gift to his children, but he was not really there. He was just waiting for them to open it so that he can get away from the house, find some friends, and get drunk. Find a bar and start drinking. But then he wrote to Colson and said, Right now, I'm here enjoying my time with my family and just wondering if there's a church open out there somewhere where I can go worship Jesus with other believers in Christ. So when Colson read that letter from this man. This is what he wrote. He wrote, For 11 years of my life, I've driven with every ounce of energy in my body to do the things in government that I believe might make people's lives better. But in all of that time, I could not point to one single person, not one life that had actually changed for the better. Now, I don't know if Colson, uh, Colson's statement is true and applies to all generations, but I ask myself this question. Can the government actually make people's lives better? And you know what the answer is? I'm sure it can. I'm sure it can make people's life better, but only on the outside. See, depending on our political choice, we may think that it certainly can when our man or woman is in power. But what I learned from both of these quotes put together is that the power that the, the, power that the government have are not even don't, they don't even come close to the power that God has to change a person's life for the better. Because God doesn't do it from the outside. God, do it, God does it from the inside. And, and from the inside is where all good change begins. So, so important for us to, to think about the things that we're involved in. Whether politically or uh, sports, whatever it is. Are we making an impact so that people's life will be better ultimately or just temporary? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, this is what Paul wrote to the believers in Corinth. He wrote, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You know what? There is nothing wrong with being involved in other activities so long as we're doing it in the name of the Lord. Because if we do it in the name of the Lord, we will do it in the power of the Lord. And the power of the Lord is what will change people's life. You know, so Chuck Colson went on to be with the Lord in 2012 at the age of 80 years old. 
you know, after he became a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he uh, he started a nonprofit organization called Prison Fellowship and also Prison Fellowship International. Uh, before Colson went to prison, there were no organizations involved uh, with the purpose of getting these people uh, out of prison when they are out, knowing that they can become better through the knowledge and their faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what Colson did. He wrote more than 30 books, of which a lot of them became both bestsellers, including this one, Born Again. But he also wrote uh, uh, The Body, also a bestseller. He also wrote How Then Shall We Now Live? Uh, he also wrote uh, Loving God, which is one that I'm reading right now as well. But I encourage you uh, that to pick up a copy of this book, read it, enjoy it, and rejoice in what the Lord can do in the life of a person when they commit their life to Christ. In the meanwhile, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And if you know of someone out there whose main hope is politics, you might want to give them a copy of this book or share this video. Maybe they'll come to see that only Jesus Christ can give us eternal hope. Only Jesus Christ can change our lives from the inside. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.